Also, I'm going to tell you guys a memory verse if you haven't already seen it on your bandana. All right? But if you can tell me, if you can recite that, if you can memorize that verse and tell me, either me or Caleb without using the Bible, another 10 points to your team. All right? We good? We good? All right, awesome. What's that? What is going on here? Everybody want to help! Tuck and roll, Patrick! Tuck and roll! <laughs> what on earth are you guys doing? Where is it? Where is it? What? It's a big boulder! It's chasing us! It's chasing after us! A, a boulder? Where? Yes! A giant boulder! It was chasing us! Where? 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 That? Um... I know it was, it was huge. <laughs> it was huge among us. That is not it. It was huge among us. That is not huge among us. Did y'all see that? It's not big. Oh. Well, it looks bigger through these. Whoa. <laughs> Let me see. Whoa. Look at that. Look at it. I kind of see you. it now. I told you. That was a very brave thing you did. Yeah, I know. And very romantic, too, to very, push me out of the way. Well, I'm a very romantic guy. <laughs> I even got an adventure badge to prove it. But I. I'd do anything for my dream. Oh, Patrick. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, 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 excuse me. We're all still here, all right? Oh, hi. Sorry, John. I, I'm really sorry. Um, she got carried away. <laughs> and she carried me with her. <laughs> I, I'd say so. It's really great to see both of you guys. That was some kind of entrance. Yeah, I know. Sorry if I scared you guys. I apologize. I'm really sorry. But that was a supersonic adventure duo hero that came in. Did you see it? Yeah, you did. <laughs> I'm sorry it scared you. But it's kind of what we do now. We? You mean like the both of you guys? Yes, that's right. That's I made right. an honest man of him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See? yeah. See? Look at it. So, wait, this is for real? You guys got married? I mean, yeah. I know you guys, like, became friends last year, but, like, you married that guy? Eh? <laughs> well. What? Really? I mean, well, you know, like, the whole snipe misunderstanding, like, you caught her and all this, like, Well, you know. once he figured out I wasn't a snipe, our relationship actually had a chance. And when he told me that he loved me and would marry me even if I was a snipe, I knew I had to spend the rest of my life with him. Yeah, but I still have snipe there. <laughs> it's really scary. <laughs> well, I think we're really happy for you guys. Uh, I know I'm happy for you guys. I was kind of shocked to hear this. Shocked. <laughs> That's very nice, John. Uh, so I'm sure some of you guys remember Patrick and Lainey from last year, all right? Um, but if you're, if you're new here... May I present to you... Patrick J. Michael Fupo here with the Fitzer at your service! And I am Lainey Q. P. Muscle, Extraordinary Adventurer at your service, too. <laughs> it sure is exciting to see you guys here tonight. Um, I've wondered about you guys all year. Like, I didn't get... A phone call, a postcard, I mean, you guys kind of just left us. What, what's you know, been going on? We're really sorry about that. We, we really are really sorry about that, guys. But we have a 
have been really busy. Yes, we have been really busy. So busy. After Patrick earned his scout badge last year, we discovered we loved adventure. That's right. So, so we, we went to 30 Super Adventure School. And we passed with flying colors. That's right. And we have been adventuring ever since. <laughs> right here with my circle club princess. That's right, my very clumsy prince. Yeah. So you guys are adventurers now? That's pretty cool. Situations. No kidding. That's so that's so cool. Cause this year we're talking about getting out of some sticky situations. Getting out of a catch twenty-two. <gasps> now we have caught a albino rhinoceros flea, but we have never caught a twenty-two. And we have been on a lot of adventures. <laughs> hmm. Boy, with that albino rhinoceros flea, something. That was something. Let me tell you. When we thought that. Woo! No, it's, it's, in, it's in a museum in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's not something that you that you catch. It's something that you. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <gasps> it's not nice to lie to children. I'm, no. You said catch. I wasn't lying. Catch twenty two means you're caught in the middle of something that's impossible well, to get out of. Then why did why did you say that that's what it was? I don't get it. So, kind of like trying to get out of a box. <gasps> or a triangle. No. And those are really tricky. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, who triangle? No, no, no. I, I, I meant those sticky situations that we're talking about right now. Have you guys ever gotten to a situation that you just felt like you couldn't get out of? Yeah. We rescued that super albino rhinoceros flea. Yes, we rescued it from the Wibu Wabu Unka tribe. Right. Well, the Wibu Wabu Wabu what? The Wibu Wabu Unka tribe. Very mean. Oh. I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> okay, so we are out here. I'm with my hunky hunkster over here, and we are searching for a very rare albino rhinoceros flea. And we've been out here a little bit, and we are- Lady, lady, look out, look out, look out, let's go! Ain't the a beauty? Yeah, I am. Oh, <laughs> the flea, yes! Well, you are too, my sugar sweet. <laughs>
you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. That was pretty uh, interesting that you guys had there. Uh, all for an albino... Rhinoceros! Flea! Flea. Yeah. So you really do know what it's like to be in a Catch-22 situation. Yeah, it's kind of just like that, 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 Who? You know, that, 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 uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. And here you are teaching children. While everyone knows the story of Sad Shack, Knee Shack, and Sadego from oh. the Bible. Oh, you, you mean, you mean, uh. Did you hear that? What? Did you hear that? I do. Show your lips. I hear it. Come on, my honky honkster! But you know those aren't actually those their names, right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We really got to know. This yeah. inventor is calling. No, but I, I think we need to talk about this for a inventor second. Inventor is okay. calling, guys! We got to do! Inventor is calling! All right, get, give it up for Patrick and Laney. You know, it's interesting that they brought up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How many got that? Right on the uh, obstacle course. Everyone should have got it right because everyone finished, right? Right? Awesome. Okay. So we're going to actually be talking about those tonight. Um, but first, we're going to go to our Lord in worship, all right? So we got the awesome band from our friends down south. And uh, so we're just going to give God glory in this moment, right? So let's all stand. Let's bow our heads and let's just go to him. Father God, we thank you for what you are about to do here at Rock Garden Christian Camp, God. And we just exalt you in this moment, Lord. And we give you the praise that you are so worthy of, God. I just ask that you touch every single soul that is in the, under the sound of my voice, Lord. God, you begin to raise up a generation that it's not fearful, that it's going to be bold to proclaim your name, to pr proclaim your truth in this moment, in this life, today. God, thank you for new beginnings. Thank you for what is happening right now. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing tonight? Are we good? Are we feeling okay? Hey, let's go ahead and come down to the front. Let's worship together. Let's sing. Let's praise God. Come on. I was buried.
to sing. We got one more song before uh, John comes back up. Sorry, I'm wiping sweat out of my eyes. Um, but hey, as we sing this last song, you know, I hope we've had some fun while we sang some upbeat, high energy songs. But man, I just want to encourage you, remind you that we are singing to the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the one who rose from the grave and is standing on the throne in power in all the glory and all the majesty surrounded by the angels. And they are all worshiping him right now as we speak. They are all singing songs, they are all praising him. Okay, so in this next song, I wanna encourage every single one in this room, everyone, if you, got, if you got a mouth and it works, I want you to sing, okay? And let's join in with heaven tonight, okay? Let's join in with the angels in the chorus of worship to the king. Can we do that?
Hello. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Awesome. Give it up for our worship team. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right. So if you guys haven't caught on, the title of this year's camp is Catch 22. How many can tell me what that means? All right, cool. That's why we're having this. Awesome. Informative camp this year, all right? Informative camp. We didn't just name that because it sounded cool, okay? Although it does sound cool, all right? We didn't just name that because it's the year 2022, but that is pretty cool, right? That's a pretty cool idea. Um, but we wanted to give you a hope this year. We wanted to give you a hope this year. See, a catch-22 is being stuck in a situation where there is no real way out. That's what a catch-22 is. Being stuck in a situation where there is no real way out. In fact, our theme verse, okay, if you guys haven't caught on yet, if you haven't looked at your bandanas, is Isaiah 43, 2. And this is where it points out, okay, what, what we're talking about, all right? If you, if you memorize this, you tell me or Caleb, guess what that gets you? Guess what that gets you, Reese? Points, points, all right, points. All right, it says this in the NLT, okay? When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. God's speaking right here. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. This is what it says in the message right here. When you are between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end because I am God, your personal God. You will not be stuck in there forever for one reason, one reason only, because he's God and he's your God. All right? We want you to know that no matter how bad of a catch-22 situation you find yourself in, there will always be just one way out. One way out. So that's the title of this message tonight. One way out. It may seem like sometimes there's an easy way out of some stuff, right, that we go through. And you'd be right. In every situation that we go through, there's going to be an easy way out. But there's a reason that it's easy, okay? The Bible talks about the wide path in Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. It says that uh, we can go down, a, a wide path that we can go down that leads to destruction. And it says a narrow is the gate, and narrow is the path that leads to life. But just a few find it. Just a few find that life-giving trail. That one way out. There are a lot of people in this world that are going to choose the easy way. The easy way out. And they're going to choose something that they think may be right. But we know in our hearts, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, you know that that's not the way out. Amen? That wide one that may seem like it's the only way out, but Satan is a deceiver, okay? And he's going to try to trick us up sometimes, all right? And so this reminds me of a story back in Daniel chapter 3 of three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So if you want to go ahead, turn to Daniel 3. I'll give you a little backstory. We have three, Hebrew, three Hebrews whose names I'm sure you've heard, all right? By now, I hope, anyway. I'm hoping we've learned this. Um, see, they live... Um, in a time that Babylon, okay, one of the most influential kingdoms, one of the most powerful secular cultures that there ever was, they had taken control over Israel, all right? And they had actually brought some of the royal family, some of the, 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 the good-looking people and stuff, and they brought them back as captives, as slaves to Babylon. So these three boys who were slaves in a foreign secular world, okay, secular world, they did not believe in God, all right? They didn't believe in anything. That they, they believed in their own stuff. They had no morals, nothing, okay? They didn't believe in, in their God, nor did they follow any of the customs, the morals, anything that the young men had known their whole lives. So King Nebuchadnezzar, okay, he's the king over, the, over Babylon at this time, has ordered a decree at this time, okay? He's ordered a decree... Um, that everyone, everyone throughout the whole kingdom would bow down to this golden statue that he had made, 90 foot tall statue, okay, that he had made at the sound of the music. 
Okay? And if you resisted, guess what happened? You were thrown in the fiery furnace. You were thrown in the fiery furnace. And it came time when that music started playing and everyone started bowing down. But three young men remained standing. Three young men remain standing, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Go to verse 13 with me. Daniel chapter 3, verse 13. Okay. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage in order that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I want, to know, I want you to know something tonight, okay? Being a Christian is going to make you do something that's going to set, upset somebody else. Being a Christian is going to make you say some things that other people aren't going to like. And that's okay. Okay, It's okay to be, get, to be different. It's okay to make a stand for God. It's okay to stand out in a crowd when everyone else is bowing down to what the world tells them is what it is. To not fit in. To not take the easy way out. That wide path. Go through that wide gate. But to grit it out. To take that straight and narrow path. Go through that narrow gate. And to make others see that the only way to get to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? Verse 15. It says, I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? This is what the enemy wants. He doesn't want you, he doesn't want to destroy you right away. He wants to give you a second chance to take the easy way out, okay? He wants you to be made a fool, to denounce God in front of your friends, to give up your beliefs and take that wide path. But this is where we take our stand. When the whole world is doing one thing and you know it's wrong, this is where you take your stand. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown in the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, but even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, I like how they're like still being polite about it, but they're mouthing them. Your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have set. Uh, I believe that's a word for someone in the room tonight. Even if. Even if under so much adversity and pain and struggle, you don't think you've you got a way out. That you have to fi find this path, you've got to do this. No. Even if God doesn't come down. Even if. I'm not going to go that way. I know this is just night one of camp, okay? But I believe that it's going to be a night of some of you that will, you will never forget. That God is going to change you in such a way that you remember on June 21st, that's when God changed my life. That's when my heart began to know the true love of the Father. But I believe this is going to be a night that maybe, maybe you're already marked by God, but maybe you're not. I believe this is going to be a night that you are marked. By God, that you become saved, that you begin to know Him on such a more intimate level than you've ever known Him before. And you may stumble along the way. Alright, I get, I get that. As a Christian, you are never down and out. You are never down and out as a Christian. You're either up or you're getting back up as a Christian. Amen? Yeah. The devil cannot keep you stuck unless you let him. You guys hear that? The devil cannot keep you where you are unless you choose to let him. So oftentimes the question is, 
when, when you're under pressure, when you find yourself in a catch-22, what comes out of you? When you find yourself in this sticky situation, what comes out of you? If you look back in history, you see that some of the most famous actions, some of the most famous lines in all of history uh, come from people that typically when they are under the most pressure. Okay, think about Dr. Martin Luther King, all right? So much pressure coming towards the nation and him and all these things. And he sits up there and he says some of the most famous lines in the whole world. I have a dream, right? I have a dream. It's when he was under real pressure, real, real adversity, that his most famous lines are recorded in history. And we know them today, right? How many know anything about the Alamo? All right. Cool. History lesson time. Wow. Come on, school teachers. Pick it back up. Yeah. So the Alamo, right? The, so the, this, is a, this is a battle in Texas, all right, for the Texas Revolution, okay? And so we got volunteers coming in to, to fight on Texas' behalf, and the, and the Mexican army is coming against them, okay? And, and Lieutenant Colonel William Travis, okay, he's the, he's the leader of this mission right here, he writes a letter, and in the letter it says, victory or defeat. Victory or, or victory, I'm sorry, victory or death. And he gathered his men, and he drew a line in the sand. And he asked any to cross that are willing to lay their lives down for this mission. It's in great moments of pressure that character is birthed. What about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? When he's up there on that cross, nailed, about to breathe his last breath, he says, it is finished. Some of the most famous lines in all of history come from some of the most pain, suffering, anguish, adversity. So the question I have for you tonight is, when you find yourself in your own Catch-22 situation, how do you react? What comes out of you? In this crazy story, we see a reaction that is unlike any other. You see, under so much pressure and facing this fiery furnace, they don't abide by what the world dictates, but they let, guide, let, they, let, they let God guide them into all truth right here. And even when the king, Nebuchadnezzar, gives them a second chance, their most famous words are spoken. Even if, you do throw us in that furnace. Our God can save us and will save us. But make no mistake, even if He don't, there is absolutely, positively, no way that we're going to bow down to that statue. Three simple statements of faith right here can change your perspective tonight. I feel like some of you at camp this week maybe have given up on the fact that God can and could save you. But you need to be reminded that we serve a God whose arm is not too short, whose ears are not too deaf. Okay? He is working on your behalf. He hears you. He's a God that turns the impossible into the possible, right? Right? Our God can save. But then you take it a step further. They say our God will save us. So He's, he's able to save us, right? We, some of us know that He is able to save us, but to go a step further and say, He will save us. He will to save us. It's the one thing that, that, it's one thing to know that He can, okay? But it's a whole other thing to declare that He's going to, that He will do it. Hebrews 11.1 1 says this. Says, I want to read it out there. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. The ESV says this. Is that the ESV right there? Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The assurance. They're sure of this. The conviction of things not seen. What are you hoping for? Are you sure of it? Are you sure of the, what you're hoping for? Or is this, this just a you know, shot in the dark? 
What is the thing that you can't see tonight in your life? What is the thing that you're hoping for? Are you sure of it? What is the thing that you cannot see tonight? And are you convicted of that? Are you convicted of that? See, these guys tonight are, talk, are talking about a God that's not only able, but willing. He is willing. This is essentially the gospel for those that don't know. Jesus came to us because we could not get to God. We could not do it in our own flesh, in our own strength. There was this great chasm, this great gap between us and God. And Jesus bridged that gap. And he made a way where there was no way. And he takes us to a place where we could not get to on our own. So Jesus coming not only reveals that he can be with us, but that he's willing because he came down, okay, as a servant. And he died on a cross for you and for me. That's a willing God. God is willing to get us out of our situations. And then these boys say something that is outside the constrictions of the way the world thinks. They say, our God can, our God will, but even if he doesn't, we're still not bowing down. They got a fiery furnace in, right in front of them. You want to talk about a catch-22? I mean, you, you either bow down, defy God, and you get to live, Right? Or you keep standing. You stand your ground. You defy the king. And you die. And not just, you know, off with your head. You, you burn to death. So much adversity. So much pressure in this moment. But the thing that comes out of this is even if faith. Even if faith. See, the real test of faith is when God doesn't behave, how do you behave? Right? When God doesn't do what you want Him to do, what do you do? Some of you in here tonight, I'm sure, have asked the question, why do bad things happen to good people? I want to flip that around. What happens when good people happen to bad situations? Right? We need to have this kind of attitude, and this even if attitude that says, guess what? I know He can, and I know He will, but whether God... Uh, whether or not God saves me in the way that I want to be saved, whether or not God heals me in the way that I want to be healed, whether or not God gets me out of this catch-22 in the way that I think he should, when God doesn't play by my rules, guess what? I'm still not bowing down. I'm still not taking that easy way out. He's been far too good to me. All I have to do is look back and see what the things that he's done in my life to keep going forward. Amen? Even if he is still my one way out. Because you really only have one way out. So I want you three points. Three points. Number one, sit. Who are you sitting with tonight? See, you all know a lot better than I do at this point. You know, I'm just an old man. That's what they tell me anyway. No, I'm a young and vibrant soul. All right? But, I, you know, it's a different dynamic at school, okay, that the lunchroom and things, you know, the people you sit with, right? You want to sit with the cool people. You want to sit with the upperclassmen. I remember back when I was a freshman, you know, not too long ago, all right, not too long ago, playing baseball, sitting up at the, the front of the bus, and some of the seniors, hey, John, come back here. And they showed me how to play the game. They taught me. They, they spoke into me. It matters. Who you sit with. Yes. It matters. Who you sit with matters. Who you sit with typically dictates who you are, right? Yeah. Who you are. We see these three young men in the book of Daniel. Not one time does it mention them alone. Not one time does it say, well, Shadrach went and did his own thing. And Abednego, you know, he, went, he actually was thinking about bowing down to the king. But, you know, the guys, you know, came around them. No. Mentions them as a unit, as a crew, right? They did life together. They were able to stand for God because they were together. Who you sit with is who you listen to, right? Who you sit with is who you become. Some of you need to get the right friend group, right? Commitment tends to last better in community, right? Amen? Yeah. Commitment needs to, tends to last better in community. You are not meant to be in the catch-22 situation alone. You will fail every time. Who you sit with matters. 
You have to make a conscious decision to get in the right friend group. Find a clique, find a crew, find a posse, okay? Because who you sit with matters. Find a group of Jesus freaks that are going to build you up, not tear you down. Some people that are going to stick with you through the catch-22. If you're not careful, we'll allow ourselves to live a life unhealthy, to live a life isolated. We'll live life all alone, and we'll come up against catch-22 situations. And when you come up against those, it will seem so much bigger when you're alone. The problems will be so much bigger when you don't have it figured out because you don't have anyone else around you building you up. And when we come together, God can move in such a miraculous way. So number one is sit. Who you sit with matters. Number two is stand. After you sit, you have to stand. In order to face the catch-22 situations in your life, you must take a stand. You must take a stand for something, right? If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything, right? Who's heard that? Can you imagine the scene in this moment? When the music begins to play, right? And everyone's bowing down and you have these three young men there in front of everyone standing. I can only imagine, you know, all the people sitting there, you know, making sure, oh, you better be sitting, you, you, you better be bowing down. You better... Wait, what's going on over there? What's happening over there? Who are those guys? Who do they think they are? You see, they, they had been taking a stand after stand after stand because this wasn't the only time they were mentioned in the Bible. When you first hear about these three guys, they come to the, into the king's court, right? And, and they're, they're put on this, this uh, uh, diet, okay? But, but, but this diet includes things that, that, that are unclean to them. They're not used to these things. And, and so them and Daniel, they, they come and they say, hey, Listen, we, we, we don't want to eat that stuff. What about we just drink some water and eat some vegetables for like 10 days? And then we'll, we'll prove it to you that we'll be healthier. Right? We'll prove it to you that, that, that we'll be better than, than the rest of the men. And when that test was over, it was proven that they were more fit, more healthier than all the others. And God showed his favor because they took a stand for him. Okay, because it doesn't just matter taking a stand, okay? You have to take a stand for God, right? And God showed favor on them, and the king was impressed with no one more than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were appointed to rule over certain areas of the kingdom, and they wouldn't have been recognized if they hadn't stood out, right? They took a stand. I've learned that when you take a stand, people will follow you. People will follow you if you take a stand. If you stand up for something that you believe in, that, 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 that is worth fighting for, people will follow you. But people may not follow if you don't take the stand. You may be someone else's key to salvation. You may be someone else's key to knowing Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. But you have to take the stand. Right? It's personal. You have to be bold. They stand before the king with boldness. Boldness. And they say, even if we won't bow. The Bible says that King Nebuchadnezzar orders that the furnace be turned up seven times hotter. Already hot. Already melting you know, steel and things like this. Seven times hotter. I want to be real with you now. I wish I could tell you that after this week of camp, Okay? Life is going to get easier. But I'm going to tell you the truth. That if you take this week serious, I'm not saying your life is going to get easier, but your life's going to get better. Right? Your life's going to get better. I believe that if you make a bold confession for Christ this week, next week the fiery furnace that you're going to go through is going to be turned up seven times hotter. That's just the truth of the matter because the devil does not want us to win. He's going to fight you tooth and nail. He's going to be nipping at your toes, at your ankles the whole time, ticking you off, making you mad, making you want to give up, making you want to denounce Christ sometimes. The fiery furnace that you're going to go through is going to be turned up. That I promise you. I may be in this catch-22, but this isn't where I'm going to stay is what you need to say to yourself. Right? We need to have that kind of attitude to tell Satan, listen here, 
I may be going through this, but that, in fact, is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through this. This isn't going to be the end of me, okay? But with God, all things are possible, amen? And I may be walking through fire, but I will not be burned. I will not even smell of smoke. And that brings me to our last point as the worship team would like to make their way back up. On night one, we have to make a decision. You have to make a decision tonight. In order to get filled up for the rest of the week, you have to make a decision tonight. We have to draw a line in the sand and declare that even if our God doesn't show up the way we think He should, we will not bow to the enemy. We will not succumb to the catch-22 in our lives. That will not be the end of us. We need to sit. We have to stand. And lastly, we have to walk. You have to walk. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar was a little steamy. All right? He goes into a rage when he finds this out. Right, And he orders the furnace to be heated up seven times hotter and tells the strongest man around to bind them up with ropes and throw them into the furnace. The fire is so hot that when the soldiers throw them in, they are in fact killed by the fire themselves. Isn't that amazing? That the thing that was, that was meant to end Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego takes out their enemies. Because that's exactly what God does on our behalf. The devil thought that the cross was going to crush the Savior, right? But turned out our Savior came down and used the cross to crush the devil. Amen? But it, these boys are thrown into the fiery furnace. I believe that those boys were able to, that they were, they were able to walk around knowing that their catch-22, that fiery furnace, they came into it unafraid, unashamed, unapologetic because they knew who they were. When they understand that you are a child of the living God, when you understand that you are saved by grace, it's not by works, it's not by flesh, it's not by saying that we can do, all of a sudden you begin to say, have a godly confidence in your life. I can walk through anything. I can make it through this catch-22 because I know who I am. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not their real names. If you studied it all, that's not their real names. Those names were put upon them by the Babylonians, all right? Actually, each one, of, each one of their names refers to a way of worshiping their God. Their God. I hope you know that the world wants to put labels on you. The world wants to label who you, who you aren't, who God did not design you to be. Our world wants to change your name, tell you who you are. But you can't listen to the world. You have to have faith that dictates the catch-22. That dictates that you better know who you are. When you've got a world that's trying to label you, you've got to open your ear to the Heavenly Father, amen, who's telling you that you are more than a conqueror, that he who is greater in you is greater than it is in the world, amen? You have to get the right label in your life because if you're going to have enough faith to go through your catch-22 you have to sit with someone you have to stand for something and you have to be able to want to walk through everything that life pushes at you amen our god did not promise us that we wouldn't go through these things he promises that whatever we go through he will walk with us see shadrach's real name was hananiah hananiah means god has favored. God has favored. Hananiah means God has favored. I can just picture Shadrach, a.k.a. Hananiah, right now when Nebuchadnezzar says, throw them into the fire. He says, it's like no problem because my God has favor on me. I have been favored by my heavenly Father. When I am weak, He is strong. It's okay. Throw me in because I know who I am. I am favored. Meshach, his name is Mishael. And his name means, who is like God? He's like, go ahead, throw me in. Let's put it to the test. I want to see what he's going to do. Who is like my God? Abednego, his name was Azariah. And his name means, God has helped. God has 
help. I like it that it's in a past tense, right? I can just see his crew coming to his side. Maybe he's a little gun shy, right? Maybe he's like, I don't know, guys. You know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, that seems kind of hot. Maybe we should just go back. We should just bow, you know. Things will be cool. I don't want to be burned up, right? And they're like, don't you know who you are? God, you are. God has helped you. And tonight, we don't worship for a blessing, but we worship from a blessing. We don't worship, okay, for the victory. We worship from a victory, right? We praise God from the victory. He has helped us. He has showed up. I have a name tonight. I can walk through anything. Stand to your feet. Come on, let's go. The Bible says these boys got thrown in the fire. The king is probably walking around like, I showed them. I bet no one else is going to stand up anymore. I showed them, guys. He sees a fourth man in the fire, and he's like, that man looks like the son of God. Them guys are walking around, right? He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. This cannot be happening. These guys are dead, right? He sees three men walking around, and he's like, no, no, no. There's four men, and one looks like the son of God. And guess what? He was the son of God. Because when life heats up, that's when Jesus shows up in your life. When you walk through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the flames, you will not be burned. Guess what? God is with you at all times in every situation that you go through because he is our one way out. The Bible says that when these boys are pulled out of the fire, only the ropes have burned off, okay? In a little bit, we're just going to go to the Father and praise and worship and worship right now from the victory because we know that he is able to, that he is willing to, but even if we don't get out of all the stuff that we're going through, we are not going to succumb to the enemy. We are not going to let the catch-22 dictate us, but we ourselves, by the grace of God, is going to dictate the catch-22 in our lives. So when you come out of that catch-22, right, they come out of the fiery furnace unbound. That means that every time that you go through that catch-22, the, the, the thing that was binding you is going to be loosed. The only thing, the only thing that it's going to her. The only thing that it's going to, to make dissolve is all the junk that you took into it. The only thing that you're going to be free of is all the stuff that you needed to leave behind in the first place. Maybe some of the stuff that got you into that situation in the first place. Amen? You come out of it completely free. Who wants to be free tonight? Who wants to be free now? So in this moment, you guys can come back up, but I wanted a serious moment, okay? I want some leaders to come up here just for, just for a moment, maybe just set up to the side. You guys can come to worship, but if you need someone to talk to, if you're saying, listen, I, I'm in some of them situations and I don't know a way out, God, listen, some of these leaders, they know the way out because they've been in those situations and they know the one to call on. They can help you. They can provide for you. So come up here. Come in this thing unashamed, unapologetic and believe that God is going to be the one way out in your life. Amen. Amen. Come here.
tells me in darkest night I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will see the goodness of God cause all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so
We serve a God that knows every hair on your head. We serve a God that wants to love you like no one has ever loved you ever in your life. And so for some of you, that may be the first time you've ever heard that. I don't know. But I believe that God has touched some people tonight. I believe God was touching some people in worship earlier. I believe God was touching some people as they were coming to camp today. And here's the thing. Grit it out. Don't back down. Rise to the occasion. God's going to show up in your life. He's going to do big things, but you have to accept Him. You have to give Him the praise that He's so worthy of. You have to let Him inside you. You have to tell Him your deepest secrets. you gotta, you got to know Him on a level that you don't know anyone else. Because guess what? God knows you more than you know yourself. God knows you that you are capable of things that you have never dreamed of. God believes that you are worth it because He sent His Son to die on a cross so that you may live with Him in heaven. Amen. So as we continue to worship, if that's you, you find me, you find a leader. If that's you, I don't want you to stand back. I want you to come forward. Okay, I want you to make a bold declaration for Christ because Christ made a bold declaration for you 2,000 years ago. You may be going through some of the situations that we talked about tonight. You may think like there is no way out that I just keep, I just keep trying to get out. I keep clawing my way out and I fall back in. I fall back in. You don't have the right ladder. You dug yourself and said, you may, you may have put yourself in a situation. Someone else may, been, may have put you in a situation. That doesn't matter. Because God is able to free you. God is, wants to free you. Amen. So as we just kind of sit here and worship, that's you. You know that's you. You to find the leader. You ask them to pray for you. Open yourself up because this is a safe place. This is a safe place to wear out all your dirty laundry. To give in so you can get up. share something with you guys real quick here. I've had the term bold actually for me going in my mind all stinking year from January. Bold, 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 bold. What's it mean to be bold? To stand up. My wife shared her testimony not that long ago. She used Proverbs 28.1 and says to be bold as a lion. What does that mean? Well, I always thought, yeah, be bold as a lion. The lion's bold, right? Roar, right? It roars. It eats stuff. It's bold. It takes a stand. Listen to this. The mighty lion is regal and fearless in his pursuit, known as the king of the beasts. He possesses courage and confidence that refuse to retreat from any threat or attack. What catch-22 are you in? 
Don't retreat. Don't run. Be bold as a lion with a roar that can be heard from miles away. A lion is an animal to be reckoned with. He is a symbol of fearlessness, strength, and invincibility. In short, a lion is bold. Bold, that's the definition of bold. How do we stand up? We stand firm on what we believe in. We stand firm on what this says. We don't let it be swayed. What are you stuck in? What are you stuck in? 2 Corinthians chapter 2, since we have such hope, we are very bold. But not like Moses who had put a veil over his face so the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to the end. If you go on over here to verse 18, and we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of God are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is of spirit, who is the spirit. Verse 17, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. When you are bold, there is freedom. You're not trapped in anything. Freedom releases you. You're not trapped. What are you stuck in? Release it tonight. Stand up, stand firm in what the Word says. He's telling you to be bold. The society we live in tells you just to fall in. Just fall in. Just get to blend in and be another one of the crowd. Oh, that's not that bad that they're doing that, right? Maybe I can do that. No. It's time to be bold. It's time to be bold. Isaiah 43, 2. What's it say? When I walk through the fire, I'll be with you. You shall not be burned. The fire shall not be burned. They stood up and they were bold. Lay it down tonight. I challenge you, lay it down tonight. Don't don't wait the rest of the week. It's the best week of your life. Don't wait till Friday. Be bold today and let it grow even stronger by Friday. So when you leave here, you can be bold. Because if you let it be weak all the way till Friday, you're going to leave here and you're going you're gonna to get conquered. Because you don't know, you don't have enough depth of the boldness. Lay it down. Lay it down. Be bold.
God, we just... We thank you that you sent heaven down here tonight. Thank you for letting us experience your glory in this place. Thank you for lives being changed. Thank you for bondages to be released. Thank you for that those that want to know you more and more and more tonight, that they make a bold declaration to you. God, we just love you in this moment. We believe that you are the God of the impossible. Whatever situation, whatever circumstance that we may be going through, you are the one way out. Thank you for making it simple. Just a, just a narrow, straight path. Just a little gate. Thank you for not making it hard. With every eye closed, every head bowed in this moment. If you're the one that said, God touched my heart. If you're the one that says, listen, I didn't know God before tonight, or maybe I maybe I knew God, maybe I had some, some kind of thought of God, but I didn't really know Him, and I want to know Him more and more. I just ask that you raise your hand real quick. Just take it up, take it back down. I see you, I see you, I see you. I see you. If that's you tonight, you've never made a declaration to Christ. If you've never made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, and you want to do so tonight, I'm going to ask you to be bold, like Caleb was talking about. I'm going to ask you to do something that might be uncomfortable, because guess what? The fiery furnace, I bet, was probably uncomfortable. But I want you to know that God can. God is able to pull you out of the strongholds. God wants to pull you out of the strongholds. But more than that, He wants to know you like you have never known anyone before. So if that's you, you want to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you to be bold. One last time tonight, I'm going to ask you to come forward. At the count of three, I want you to start taking a step. Okay? I want you to start taking a step. And we believe that if you make a confession to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, that all of heaven rejoices and so this place is going to erupt for you because we love you we care for you we want to know you we, we want to help you out so when I count to three if that's you and I know it's at least three of you if that's you take a step one two three come on don't be scared all right? Make a bold declaration for Christ right now. Here, here's one. Here's one. There we go. There's another. There's another. I know there's one more, guys. I know there's one more. Be bold. Be bold for Christ. Be bold as a lion. Be bold as a lion. All right. We're not going to tear it. Hey. I know there's one more. That's okay. You get with a leader tonight. Okay? You get with a leader tonight. So, uh, Kate, Jamie, will you come and pray with Bella? Max, Michael, will you come pray with uh, Tristan? Where's Michael at? There he is. You said there's one more. 
There she is. You said there's one there more. There she is. <laughs> now there may be more. That don't mean we can stop. L listen. All right? Listen. To be bold means to stand up, right? So yes, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were bold. But listen. What if there was a compromise? What if they compromised? If they compromised, it's lost. One compromise is all it takes. Are you compromising tonight? Well, I'll just give in to this. Well, I, nobody else is going up. The guy standing next to me is not going up. Am I compromising? Because it doesn't look cool. What do you need? Don't, don't compromise and walk out that back door back there tonight. Compromise and boldness go together. The lack thereof of the compromise. You don't compromise and be bold. That doesn't work together. Have you been compromising at home? Something behind the scenes nobody sees. Well, I'm great. I'm great in public. But at home, I compromise within my own spirit. Is that you? If it's that feeling, I'm not calling you how God is. I don't know what you guys are going through. But I know what does take place in society today. I know what does take place in kids today. What do you compromise behind closed doors that nobody else sees? What do you need to release from tonight? And you're going to make a declaration from this point forward that you're going to stand up and be bold and there's not going to be any more compromise in your life. No more compromise. Because when you compromise, that just lets the enemy put a foot in the door. If you ever get a foot in the door, that door's will easily opened. Don't give the enemy a seat at your table. If you let him sit down, he's going to take it over. Don't compromise tonight. Don't compromise. God, we come to you right now. And I just pray a boldness and a firmness and a steadfastness to fall into the spirit of those that are feeling the, the tendency to want to compromise. That your spirit of being firm would fall in. Your spirit of being firm would fall into their hearts right now, Father. And they would make that declaration. They would come stand right up front here. They would make that declaration tonight. There's no more compromise in my life. No more compromise behind closed doors when nobody else is looking. No more compromise. No more compromise into what you're looking at. No more compromise into who you're hanging with. No more compromise into your actions. People are watching, guys. People are watching. No more compromise. It's time to be bold. Father, I just pray a, a peace to fall over this place. Peace that surpasses understanding. Because those go together. When you are bold, you have the peace of your will fall upon us. We know it falls into your will that we stand firm in this time, Father. Just pray that over this place. If someone needs something, I pray, I pray they don't compromise tonight. Make the commitment.
All right, tonight, that was just night one. Praise God. Praise God. Our heads. Father God, we thank you for what you've done in this moment right now, God. We thank you for this holy ground that we're walking on, Lord. We believe that you are not done yet, that you have just begun. We can't wait to see what you're going to do next. Keep us safe as we go on and around the camp. Keep us safe tomorrow, Lord. We thank you for everything you lead us, you guide us as we go. In Jesus' name, we're